يقول شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية ما رأيت شيئا يغذي الروح والعقل ويحفظ الجسم ويضمن السعادة أكثر من إدامة النظر في كتاب الله عز وجل بالقرآن اهتدي في رحبه تحل الحياة شوقا إلى المولى أتاي أسلمت روحي للإله قد زان لي أغلى طريق وهو الشفيع هو الرفيق يا هائما هل تستفيق وترى السعادة والنجاة قد زان لي أغلى طريق وهو الشفيع هو الرفيق يا هائما هل تستفيق وترى السعادة والنجاة Hello, my name is Tony. I'm from Canada. I'm 33 years old. I have a degree in information technology. And alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. ولد لعائلة مسيحية ملتزمة في الوقت الذي قرر فيه بأن يصبح مبشرا للنصرانية ويدعو المسلمين. استقر في نفسه أن الحق في الإسلام. Tony من Canada. Uh, before Islam, I uh, was a Christian, so I was from the Baptist sect, and uh, I always believed in God, but I never really understood like how he could be like the, uh, you know, three parts in one or something like that, like the church was telling me. So, uh, you know, I, I also was a little confused about who Jesus was because, you know, some Christians would say Jesus is the Son of God, some Christians would say he is God. And so I was, had a lot of confusion about uh, like uh, the concept of God. Like my concept was very confused. The first time I heard about Islam, actually, I was uh, driving my car. So I was driving on the way to work. I was about uh, maybe 16 years old. And uh, I was listening to a Christian radio station. So they said Muslims worship the moon, the black rock, and they worship the Prophet Muhammad. And they were saying that Muslims are very violent and aggressive and Islam is a religion of terror and all these uh, negative things. So during that time I decided I wanted to become a missionary to bring Muslims to Christianity. And so this led me to studying a lot. I read the Bible. فتعمق طوني بقراءة الإنجيل ولكنه وجد أمورا زادت من حيرته. When I was reading in the Bible, I was noticing that the prophets are praying with their face on the ground. I was noticing that Jesus was fasting. I was noticing lots of things. I was noticing that in the Bible it talks about a woman wearing hijab and naqab and things in the Bible. So this made me very curious because I saw Muslims are practicing this, but Christians aren't practicing this. أنت اندهشت عندما علمت أن كل الأنبياء يصلون على طريقة المسلمين. يسجدون ويركعون حدثني عن هذا الموقف Yeah so when I grew up I grew up in a Christian family very traditional they taught me that when you pray you should pray like this you should put your hands together like this or the other option is like this so you make the choice and they would say you look up like this so you're looking up to uh, God so this is the way I thought uh, you know it must be in the Bible somewhere I was very young you know, so this is what everybody's teaching me. This is even what they do in church. Uh, they would talk about this way of praying. So, uh, so from that point, I, I guess I just uh, thought, you know, I should uh, uh, learn about it myself. I had a lot of misconceptions. I saw a lot of things on, on TV, on the radio, etc. But I just thought uh, I should learn and study for myself rather than relying on other sources. So I just wanted to uh, forget everything that I learned and just start fresh from real sources, from academic sources um, and, and learn about it. You know, maybe just uh, curiosity, just for curiosity's sake. And you know, there's something else very interesting about the Bible, very significant, is that it talks about a messenger that will come after Jesus. So it's very, very, uh, you know, interesting. But this isn't the way that most people would interpret 
the Bible. This isn't the way that it's taught, but if you look, it's there. For example, if you read the Psalms, it says, a book will be given to one who's illiterate, and it will be said to him, read, and he will say to you, I cannot read. So, I mean, who is this? It's, it's astonishing. The first time that I heard the Quran being uh, recited, it was uh, when I was older again, uh, you know, maybe my late teenage years, and I was watching uh, CNN actually, and they were showing Muslims praying. And I think they were kind of showing it to make it seem scary. I remember uh, they were showing uh, the, the Muslims praying from the back, so the camera was like up high in the mosque and showing everybody bowing at once and everything. So this was the first time I heard the Quran being recited and it was so beautiful. I couldn't believe like how beautiful this was. And uh, you know, it, made, it just makes my eyes water. It was just so nice. لم تنتهي قصة طوني وسماعه للقرآن قبل إسلامه ففي يوم من الأيام ذهب إلى مسجد وكان الإمام في هذا المسجد صومالي وصوته جميل جدا So one day I went to the mosque and I wanted to get a copy of the Quran and uh, actually meet a Muslim in real life, not just on the internet or what I see on TV and radio. And so I went and met uh, an Imam and he's from Somalia. He gave me a translation of the Quran and everything. And he said, if you want, you can uh, sit in the back and then you can just watch us pray because it was near Maghrib time. So I just sat in the back and I listened to him. He had such a beautiful recitation. It was so beautiful. من ذكاء هذا الإمام حفظه الله أنه أهداه الكتاب كهدية فكان لها أثر كبير في نفس طوني. And a very very nice guy. And uh, he gave me the a copy of the Quran for free. It's uh, it has English and Arabic inside, so it would have the English on one side and the Arabic on the other side. And he gave it to me for free, and I said, uh, like, wow, that's very generous of you. Are you sure you want to? just give it to me for free? And he said, yes, of course. Uh, he said, it's my job to give uh, the Quran to people when they, when they ask for it. So yeah, he gave it to me for free. فبدأ طوني يقلب صفحات المصحف المترجم ويبحر في تدبر القرآن حتى تأثر بشكل كبير بأربعة آيات لا زال يذكرها. So the verses that affected me the most was Ayat al-Kursi, I didn't even know this is an important ayah in the Quran. I thought it's just another ayah. But it was really good because it uh, talks about God never needing to sleep and he's very powerful. So when I compared that to uh, the God of Christianity, I could see that it's more logical. You know, in Christianity, uh, there's a story about uh, God becoming like a man and Jacob wrestled with him and beat God. So. You know, uh, the concept of God in Christianity is a, a little bit weak. Uh, also in the Bible, it talks about God needing rest or to sleep. So when I re read this, this had a big impact. You know, I, I felt like, okay, which God is true then? The, the one that seems a little weaker or the one that's all powerful? Obviously, I have to go with the logical choice, right? <laughs> أخي طوني عندما أهدي لك المصحف المترجم أنت قرأت آيات من كتاب الله سبحانه وتعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول وقالوا كونوا هودا أو نصارى تهتدوا وفي الآية الأخرى أنت قرأتها ما كان إبراهيم يهوديا ولا نصرانيا ولكن كان حنيفا مسلما وما كان من المشركين 
حدثني عن اثر هاتين الايتين عليك Yeah, it affected my life uh, a lot because uh, these verses uh, basically were the foundation of me changing my religion. Otherwise, I would stay a Christian, but this had such a, an effect on me that I, I changed my religion because of it, because of uh, what's written there, because it, you can't argue with the logic. You know, any Christian or Jewish person or something like that, or people who are following other religions, Uh, should look to Abraham because he's like the father of monotheism is what uh, scholars call him. You know, Abraham was, came before all the religions. He wasn't a Jew because he came before Judaism. He wasn't a Christian, he came before Christianity. So these things had a big impact on me. قال أحد أحبار اليهود للنبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما الهدى إلا ما نحن عليه فاتبعنا يا محمد تهتدي وقالت النصارى مثل ذلك فأنزل الله سبحانه وتعالى في سورة البقرة وقالوا كونوا هودا أو نصارى تهتدوا قل بل ملة إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين الحنيفية هي الاستقامة وهي أن تؤمن بكل ما أرسل الله سبحانه وتعالى من الرسل فلا إيمان بالله سبحانه وتعالى إلا بالإيمان برسله And you know I also like this part uh, right at the beginning of سورة البقرة It says, this is a book in which there is no doubt. You know, it's very firm, very solid. اللحظة المهمة في حياتك أخي طوني وهي لحظة النطق بالشهادة حدثني عن هذا اليوم وأين كان وذهبت مع من؟ I was meeting with this imam from Somalia several times. I went and uh, visited him maybe two or three times with my questions that I wrote down as I was reading through the Quran and studying. I was listening to debates like with Ahmed Didat and uh, other people uh, online. I was watching YouTube videos of lectures and things like that. And uh, I just came to a point in my life where I felt like this is uh, true. So I drove to meet uh, my, my friend, he's the Imam, and I uh, had a few final questions for him. And then I told him, okay, I want to become a Muslim, just like that. And he was very happy. I felt a little bit nervous, to be honest, but um, You know, I felt like I'm making the right decision because I had thought about it for a long time. I did a lot of research, a lot of studying on my own. Then when I made the Shahada, you know, I felt very light. I felt very relaxed and peaceful and I felt happy with my decision. And the Imam asked everybody to come and greet me and to congratulate me and they were so happy that I became Muslim. I wasn't expecting this honestly. I wasn't expecting them to have this level of excitement and joy in their heart to see somebody convert to Islam. Okay. Okay. There's no compulsion in religion, so I can't tell you, yes, you must become Muslim. I can't tell you this, of course, because otherwise uh, Allah will punish me because, you know, Allah says in the Quran, there's no compulsion in religion. We can't force people. So I just want to say, you know, you're welcome to uh, learn. You're welcome to contact your local mosque. And I'm pretty sure if you've never had contact with Muslims before, You probably have a lot of misconceptions and all those misconceptions will be cleared up once you meet uh, real people. Even if you don't want to convert to Islam, that's fine, but just, uh, you know, be open-minded and, uh, and just think about things and take your time. If you are interested in, in, in Islam, that's great, but, you know, just take your time and make sure that it's a decision that's right for you. Okay, I'll recite uh, Surah Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم 
صراط الذين انعمت عليهم خير المقدوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين Uh, I told my parents by email because I wanted to uh, break it, the news to them very softly. And so I thought an email would be a little softer than me telling them. Then they could have time to think about their emotions and how they would react and everything like that. So I sent them an email and I just told them that I converted to Islam and uh, I believe it's true. And uh, you know, I said there's a lot of misconceptions, so don't uh, judge me for this. You know, maybe just stay open-minded. And uh, they, they were very shocked. Um, you know, they, they tell me that they still love me and I'm still their son and everything like that. But they said, you, you know, uh, next time you want to shock us with news, uh, choose a better time to, uh, <laughs> to shock us. Yeah, they weren't happy about it. They definitely weren't happy at all. But, um, but you know, they told me that I'm still their son and they love me and it's my decision. I'm, I'm an adult. I can think for myself. MashaAllah, Akhi Tori, بعد إسلامك أصبح لك موقع إلكتروني في الإنترنت يتحدث عن الإسلام. أريد أن أعرف الرسالة التي تريد إيصالها من خلال هذا الموقع. Uh, after I converted to Islam, I made a website and uh, the, the point of the website was just to clear up misconceptions because before I converted to Islam, I had so many misconceptions. There was lots of things I didn't know. There was lots of things that I thought about Islam and they were totally wrong. We all should try and improve and become better people and the world should be a better place after we're dead. You know, Muslims are such nice people, especially Arabs, they're such nice people. I know that Westerners would love you if uh, you make friends with them. I want to know the role of the Quran now in your life and the impact of the Quran now Now, if you look at uh, my relationship with the Quran today, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a hobby for me. I like to uh, listen to it. Uh, maybe I'm not very good at memorizing it and I read very slowly, but uh, it's something that's very interesting. It feels like it. It's uh, something with substance. It's uh, it's heavy, you know. It's just something very uh, feels very pure and touches touches your heart. <laughs>